So the Behringer XR mixers are capable of receiving MIDI in order to control different things in the mixer. Here's how you do it. A program change will load different snapshots and different controller changes will adjust the volume of the fader, turn on and off muting on different channels, and also control the panning. So first of all, I'm going to be using the MIDI Captain. I have the MIDI out going into the MIDI in on my Behringer XR18 mixer. This will work with the XR12 or the XR16 or even the 32, and you can use whatever MIDI controller you want. This is just how I'm going to do it for the demo. If you do know nothing about MIDI, some of this might go over your head, and I do recommend watching my beginner's guide to MIDI programming first. So first of all, if I send a program change on channel one, I can load different snapshots. So you can see I have different snapshots saved in here of different configurations and different bands that I perform with with the Behringer mixer. So if I sent program change zero on MIDI channel one, it will load this first snapshot, the blank one. If I send program change one, it's gonna load this next one, you will do a two. If I send program change two, it'll load the next one, Scott solo acoustic, and so on and so forth. So let me show you how that works. Also, just FYI, I'm using the Mixing Station app. I personally love Mixing Station more than the X Air app. I do have a video going over Mixing Station, but the same idea applies even if you're using the X Air app. So this first button is programmed to send program change zero on MIDI channel one. So when I push it, it's going to load the blank snapshot. This next one is going to load the next snapshot, and then the next one will load the next snapshot, next snapshot, and so on and so forth. So if I do this eighth one, this will load my 90s bands snapshot that I have saved here. So that's how you can load different snapshots. That's probably pretty extreme and you probably want to do a little bit less. So using control changes, you can actually adjust the volume of each channel, mute different channels, and also adjust the panning. Here's how you do that. So a MIDI control change on channel one will control the volume of a fader. MIDI channel two will mute and unmute a channel. And then a control change on MIDI channel three will adjust the panning. The MIDI channel will determine if it's going to control the volume, muting, or panning. And then the control change number will control which channel strip you want to control. And then the value will determine where that parameter will be set at. Again, if that doesn't make any sense at all, I do highly recommend watching my MIDI programming guide. So let's say if I want to control this first channel strip, that's going to be Tony vocals, I need to send commands on controller change zero. If I want to control Scott vocals, I need to do controller change one, Rick vocals, controller change two, kick, controller change three, and so on and so forth. So if I want to control the volume of the fader for Tony vocals, I'm going to send on MIDI channel one, controller change zero, and what value do I want to send? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this one send a toggle from 0 to 127. So it's just going to go from off all the way to max, just so you can see what it does. So that was on MIDI channel 1, which controls the fader. MIDI channel 2 is going to control the mute and the unmute. So I'm going to send MIDI channel 2, controller change 0, and toggle between 0 and 127 in order to mute and then unmute that first channel. And then last but not least, if I want to control the panning, I'm going to do that on MIDI channel 3. MIDI channel 3, controller change 0. What value do I want? So I'm going to show you the extremes. I'm going to have it switch from 0 to 127 to show it panned all the way to the left and all the way to the right. So there you go. MIDI channel 1 for the fader, channel 2 for the muting, and channel 3 for the panning. Now remember, the value will determine where the parameter is set. So for example, MIDI channel one, controller change zero, on these bottom four buttons, I now have them set to send a value of 25, 50, 75, and 100. So this is going to control the fader of the first channel, and you can see that it sets it accordingly based on the value. When I first did it, I just did it to toggle from zero to 127. So it would go all the way down, all the way up, but this is how I can set the fader exactly where I want it to be. And again, you can do this on other channel strips as well. I'm just going to demo this with mute because I think that's the one that I find the most useful personally. So if I wanted to control Scott vocals, that would be controller change one, Rick vocals, controller change two, so on and so forth. But you can keep going. So these are my 16 channels right here. If I go over and I want to turn on and off effect one, for example, that would be done with controller change 17. So now I can turn on and off effect one by using controller change 17 to turn it on and off. 
If you're using the 12 or the 16, you might have to just calculate differently. This is just what it is on the 18, but the same idea applies to any of the other models as well. Let's go over if I want to control my ear channel, for example, that's going to be controller change 22. So you can see I'm muting and unmuting the Scott ears channel with controller change 22. If I send controller change 30, that will turn on and off effect send four. And then last but not least, controller change 31 will mute and unmute the master channel as well. So again, going back to our table, program changes on MIDI channel one will load different scenes and snapshots. For controller changes, MIDI channel one is for the fader, two is for mute, three is for panning, and then which control change will determine which channel strip you're going to control, and the value will determine where you want that parameter to be set to. So I hope that helped you guys out. If this was exactly what you were looking for, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. It feeds the YouTube algorithm gods and recommends my channel to more people and it allows more people to find it. So I would sincerely appreciate it. Do make sure that if you are doing this, you have basically no way to send a program change unless if you truly want it. Because if you send a program change in the middle of your show, it's going to load a completely different scene and that's gonna be pretty bad for the show. Two other videos of mine to check out. Be sure to check out my review of the MIDI Captain. That's a pretty affordable MIDI controller that is very programmable and I've reviewed that on my channel. And if you also want to find out how I use the wireless Witty Master plus a MIDI baby to control our talkback mic so our singer actually can use his same microphone to send a message to our ears and then go back to singing, you can check out my video on the, all the ways to set up a talkback mic. That's personally how I use MIDI on the Behringer mixers. You can check out both those videos by clicking the links on your screen now. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Scott Ewell Music. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.